Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Bible study with Pastor Bowens. This week's announcements are as follows. January is National Blood Donor Month. We ask that you consider donating blood as it helps to save lives. To make an appointment, please go to the website at www.redcross.org slash giveblood. No matter how big or how small the contribution, it can greatly impact someone's life. God bless. February is Black History Month, and the men's ministry meeting will be held in honor of celebrating the men and women who have paved the way for us all. The meeting will be held on February 5th at 1030 a.m. You can join in by visiting the Zoom link on the church's website at fbcduluth.org and selecting the men's ministry page and clicking join live. For more information, please contact brothers Marvin Woodfield and Ryan Dindy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Please join us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for prayer and devotion led by the FBC Mothers Ministry. The Zoom link can be accessed from the church's website. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless. If you're looking for ways to stock your pantry and stuff your refrigerators, the FBC Outreach Ministry is here to help during these challenging times. Please drive on through on Fridays from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. to get free groceries, meat, produce, dairy, desserts, snacks, you name it. First come, first serve at Friendship Baptist Church. Be blessed. Omicron. This COVID-19 variant spreads more quickly and efficiently than any other known variants and is extremely transmissible. There have been over 5 million reported cases on January 5th, 2022, which is more than double the amount of cases reported in January 2021. What can we all do? If you are 5 years or older, you can get both vaccines and the booster. Please wear a 3-ply surgical or k 5 mask, which offers more protection in all public spaces. Washing your hands, maintaining social distancing, and staying home unless absolutely necessary. And if you feel sick, please get tested and stay at home. We are all in this together, so let us abide by God's word. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but for the interests of others. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4. Greetings and salutation, my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be back with you on another Bible study. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you had a blessed day on today and that you're ready to get into the Word of God on tonight. Well, we're going back to the book of James. Amen. And uh, we're going to study out of the third chapter. I want to try to finish up this lesson about the fiery tongue. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings over us tonight as we study his word. Holy Father, we do come again to the throne of grace to say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to study your holy word. Father, we ask that you forgive us of all sins that we have committed against thee. Create within us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us. You said if we confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Father, we stand on the promise of your word and we confess our sins. Now, Holy Father, we ask that you would just Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Use us for this hour, O God. Bless your people, O God, I pray tonight through your word that they might be edified, that they may be encouraged, that they may be enlightened, that they might run on to see what the end shall be. O God, we find strength in your word. Your word is truly a light unto our path. So bless us through your word on tonight, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. All right, in the last week, we started this lesson to study on James chapter 1, verses 1 through 12, and we was talking about the fiery tongue, and so last week, I think we talked, first of all, about the perfect man. James talked about that perfect man in verses 1 and 2 of chapter 3. Now, in talking about the perfect man, 
James was not talking about a sinless person. He was speaking of a mature Christian. Amen. Someone who was mature in the Lord. Amen. And he also let us know that being teachers of the word and being leaders in the word, we will be held to a stricter account. Amen. So James talked about that perfect man or the mature man. He also talked about in verses 3 through 6, amen, the power of the tongue. Amen. He talked about how we are able to tame and have tamed all sorts of animals. Amen. Amen. And had those animals under our control. Amen. But that but but that tongue, amen. Uh not being able to con uh, 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 uh tame it. Lord have mercy. So the tongue is a very powerful thing. Amen. And also, James talked to us last week in verses 7 through 8 about the poison in the tongue. Amen. The poison in the tongue. Amen. It's like a viper. It's like a cobra snake. It's full of deadly poison. Now, tonight, we're going to pick up in our lesson again, but we're going to be looking at verses 9 through 12. And James is talking to us about the problem with consistency. Amen. The problem with consistency. And we'll see what James is talking about in just a few minutes. But let's read uh, chapter 3, verses 9 through 12 of James. James says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. Now, this is where James is talking about the inconsistency <clears throat> with our tongue. We use it to bless God, to praise God, and then we turn around and use it to curse men who are made in the similitude of God. Now, James says, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be, or ought, ought not so to be. Uh, doth a fountain send forth the same, out of the same place, sweet water and bitter? Uh, can the fig tree, my brethren, and I love how James says, my brethren, amen. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? either of fine figs, uh, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Amen. So, tonight that's where we'll pick up at verses 9 through 12, the problem with inconsistency. Amen. Now, because the tongue is untamable, amen, it is inconsistent. Amen. Because we cannot control it. It is inconsistent. One minute we are blessing God. And in another minute we are cursing men who are made. Amen. In the similitude of God. Now James makes it very, very clear, my brothers and sisters, that this is a no-no. Amen. The words in, in the verse ought not, ought not. Amen. James says, this ought not so be. Amen. Or if these are very strong words and they're very emphatic words. Amen. And they give a negative command. Now, our inconsistency creates confusion and resentment in the hearts of those who listen to us. Amen. You can't be praising God one minute and then in the next minute you're cursing men or you're cursing the children of God. God help us to all, help us all to yield our tongues to the Holy Spirit each and every day. Amen. And this is something that we have to practice doing. This is something that we have to intentionally do on a daily basis is yield our tongue to the Holy Spirit. Now, when we are yielded <clears throat> to the Holy Spirit, our tongue, watch this, can do great 
good. Amen. When we are yielded to the Holy Spirit, our tongues can do great good. Amen. The tongue can be helpful rather than hurtful. Amen. It can bring balm rather than blisters. Amen. And it can be pure instead of polluted. Lord have mercy. Our tongue can place smiles, amen, rather than frowns upon people's faces, amen. And it can bless God, amen, rather than blaspheme God, amen. Now, as, it, as destructive as the tongue can be, Lord have mercy, it can also be one of the greatest powers for good in this world. Let me say that again. As destructive as our tongues can be, our tongues can also be, amen, one of the greatest powers for good in this world. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, the tongue, watch this, can create enthusiasm with its eloquence. Amen. Amen. By using eloquent words of love and kindness, amen, it rouses the whole nature, amen, of a person by its appeal, amen, to the conscience, amen. The tongue is the most stirring musical instrument in the world, amen. It is the trumpet of truth, amen. It is the bugle that rings out the clarion call to duty, amen. And it's the flute with its soft, amen, sweet melodies of love, amen. The tongue, my brothers and sisters, is, uh, 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 can be filled, amen, with honey instead of poison. If we will give that tongue to the Lord, if we will yield that tongue to the Spirit, amen, it can be filled with honey instead of poison. And why not use your tongue to bring life instead of death? Amen. And, and as Christians, I believe this is what God would have us to do. He would have us to use our tongues to speak life rather than death. Proverbs 12 and 18 says, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. Amen. But the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health. Peter, the apostle Peter, gave his tongue to the Lord, and 3,000 people bent their knees to Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost and trusted him as their Lord and their Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul, who was a killer of Christians before he was saved, Lord have mercy. But when the Lord was given control of his tongue, amen, Paul Amen. It was so powerful and his tongue was so powerful that it caused the powerful Felix to tremble under conviction. Amen. Because Paul spoke words. Amen. That caused him to tremble. Now the tongue <clears throat> can be a blessing or it can be a curse. Amen. When it blesses, it comforts those who need comfort, and it gives strength and encouragement to those who are fearful and weak. Amen. You can use your tongue by, 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 by way of the Holy Spirit and minister help and healing to those who are hurting and feel defeated and discouraged and full of despair. Amen. Proverbs 15 and 4 says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein 
is a branch, or excuse me, or, uh, 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 but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Amen. Perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A wholesome or a healing tongue refers to speech that is therapeutic, strengthening, and soothing. Amen. A wholesome tongue, amen, is a healing tongue, amen, and it speaks, amen, of a tongue that is therapeutic, a tongue that is strengthening, a tongue that is soothing, amen. It, it, it is a source of vitality, amen. Uh, there is great power in encouragement and great destruction in crookedness. Lord have mercy. Perverseness or crookedness, amen, destroys the morale or crushes the spirit of people. Amen. Let me say that again. Perverseness or crookedness destroys the morale or crushes the spirit of people. Lord have mercy. Proverbs 10, 21 says, The lips of the righteous, watch this, feed many. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die of want of wisdom. Amen. Fools die for want of wisdom. Now, the word feed in that verse uh, involves the shepherding, nourishing, encouraging, training, counseling, and the strengthening of others. Amen. Uh, we feed others, my brothers and sisters. Amen. We feed others. Amen. Uh, by encouraging uh, them, we feed others by godly wisdom and truth. Amen. That's how we feed others. Amen. A fool, on the other hand, uh, spiritually starves himself. Amen. Which is the natural result of his actions and his attitude. Amen. Now, Proverbs 16, 24, notice what it says. Pleasant words or as an honeycomb, amen, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Lord have mercy. Pleasant, kind, or delightful words strengthen and bring healing to others. Amen. Pleasant, kind, delightful words strengthen and bring healing to others. Amen. They heal, watch this, like honey. Now, many folk don't realize the medical benefits, amen, of honey. Amen. Honey is used, watch this, to treat ulcers, to prevent cancer, amen, to prevent heart disease, amen, to soothe and to heal the skin of wounds and uh, and, and a sore throat. Amen. Uh, uh, honey uh, is a natural antiseptic. Amen. That kills viruses, bacteria, fungus. Amen. Making it good. Amen. For wound dressing. Amen. Amen. Now when honey comes in contact with the moisture of the body, amen, it slowly releases hydrogen, amen, peroxide, amen. Honey cleanses the blood, amen, and helps the kidneys and intestines to function better, amen. It quickly energizes the body and the brain within seven minutes, Amen. Relieving the body of fatigue. Now, if you put honey on a bee sting, amen, it will take the pain away. Amen. Drawing out 
the venom. Amen. So pleasant words, pleasant Christian God-fearing words strengthen, they sweeten, and they heal like honey. Amen. And God's word is also compared to honey because, amen, of its cleansing, healing, and strengthening effects on our lives. Amen. Proverbs 12, 25. Heaviness of the heart. Amen. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. Mm. But a good word maketh it glad. Amen. Worry and anxiety makes a man depressed and discouraged. Amen. It weighs him down. Lord have mercy. But encouraging words lift the spirit of a person. Amen. A wholesome or a healing tongue. Amen. Exalts praises and glorifies the Lord. Amen. A wholesome and healing tongue exalts, praises, and glorifies the Lord. Psalm 66 verse 17 says, I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. Amen. And that word extolled means to exalt or to praise. So what the psalmist is saying is, I cried unto the Lord with my mouth and I praised him with my tongue. And see, that's what a wholesome tongue does. It exalts, it praises, and it glorifies the Lord. Also, that wholesome tongue, that healing tongue, it gives healing, strength, and encouragement to others. Amen. That wholesome tongue, that healing tongue, it gives healing, strength, and encouragement to others. Proverbs 12 and 18. There is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Amen. The tongue of the wise is health. Now, some folks use their tongues like a sharp knife or a sword. Lord have mercy. Their words pierce and slice people like a madman stabbing a victim over and over again. Now, the word speaketh in that verse, in the Hebrew, it means to speak with rashness. Amen or to blurt out, amen, without thinking, amen. Do you know anybody that does that? Amen. Speak without thinking, amen. I believe sometimes we all have done that. At some point, we have all spoke without thinking. Moses did this, and it cost him the entrance, amen, into the promised land. Notice what Psalms 106 in verse 33 says about Moses. It says, because they provoked his spirit, the people of Israel provoked his spirit so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. Lord have mercy. Now the word here, unadvisedly, means rashly. He spoke rashly. Amen. Uh, the wise man, on the other hand, will think before he speaks. Amen. His words bring health. Amen. His word brings healing. Now, the word health means healing or, uh, or, 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 or curing. Amen. People today, my brothers and sisters, I don't have to tell you this, but people today need healing. They need healing from their bitterness. They need healing from their anger, depression, and discouragement. Amen. They need healing. And wise, godly counsel can help these people. 
in their needs. Amen. So we need the, 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 the tongue that is wholesome. Amen. We need that tongue, amen, that will uh, speak healing. Amen. Amen. Now, a wholesome or a healing tongue, watch this, is kind. Amen. A wholesome or a healing tongue is kind. Proverbs 31, 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Did you hear that? She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. That's what a wholesome and healing tongue does. Amen. It, it, it is kind, and it speaks kind words. Amen. Now, we talk about kindness with a great ease. Amen. But unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, kindness is a trait that is lacking in many Christians today. Amen. Harsh tongues tend to turn people away from Christ. Amen. When we when we speak with harshness, amen. Uh, when we speak, amen, and there's harshness in our tone, it tends to turn people away. Amen. But a wholesome tone, amen, a healing tone is kind. Amen. A wholesome tone, a healing tone, amen, speaks about good noble, acceptable, and truthful matters. Amen. Watch this. It avoids trashy conversations. Amen. It avoids trashy conversations. Proverbs 8, verses 6 and 7 says, Here, for I will speak of excellent things. I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my mouth shall be right things. And the opening of my mouth shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Amen. Now that word, the word excellent, means noble, amen, or priestly things. Amen. Uh, the word speak in that verse, amen, comes from a Hebrew word, amen, which means to meditate, amen. We are to meditate, my brothers and sisters, on the truth of scriptures, amen. We are to meditate on the truth of scriptures. That's why the word of God said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat with the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Amen. So we are to meditate on the truth of the scriptures. Amen. And doing this, amen, and obeying the word of God, Amen. Will lead to success. Amen. It'll lead to victory. Amen. Uh, uh, the word of God says in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, This book of the law, amen, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein <clears throat> day and night. Amen. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Amen. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Amen. And then thou shalt have good success. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. And we all want to succeed. We all want to be successful. And I don't believe God ever sets us up to fail, to fall. He always sets us up to succeed, to give us victory. Amen. And this is what he's doing with Joshua. He's setting Joshua up to succeed. And he's telling him how to do it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you got to meditate in it day and night. 
And then, Joshua, you're going to have some good success. Amen. Proverbs 10, 32. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Lord have mercy. Now, the word acceptable in that verse, he says, the lips of the righteous knoweth what is acceptable. And that word acceptable can be translated fitting, proper, or pleasing. So, the lips of the righteous knows what is fitting, knows what is proper, knows what is pleasing. And so, the lips of the righteous speaketh those things that are fitting, that are proper, and that are pleasing. Amen. Amen. Uh, those who have a wholesome tongue, amen, a healing tongue, amen, watch this, use their tongue to preserve and protect life instead of destroying life. Amen. Those with a wholesome and healing tongue, they use their tongue to preserve life, to protect life instead of destroying life. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number three. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Have mercy, Lord. Your tongue, my brothers and sisters, can make things go well for you, or your tongue can create major problems for your life. Have mercy, Lord. Uh, the phrase in that verse, rod of pride, in the Hebrew it reads, a small shoot a branch, a twig, or growth of conceit, conceit, amen, a growth of conceit, amen, amen. See, when there's pride, there is some conceit there. Pompous, proud people who give the appearance of being superior than everyone else, they chide, uh, they intimidate, they browbeat, and put people on guilt trips, and they're foolish for doing so. Amen. One of the curses of the church today is pride in leadership. Amen. Sometimes we allow positions to fill us with pride. Amen. Or perhaps we were already uh, full of pride when we got the position and when we got the position amen the pride started to come forth amen but this is one of the curses of the church today is pride in leadership because it devastates the entire ministry because it eventually leads to destruction amen or failure Lord have mercy. Amen. Uh, but 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 the wholesome tongue, amen, the healing tongue, it preserves, it protects, amen, and instead of destroying, amen. Also, that wholesome tongue, amen, that healing tongue, uh, it calms others, amen. It calms others others. Amen. Proverbs 15 and 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Lord have mercy. Amen. A soft or a gentle answer amen, has a calming effect on angry people. Amen. One grievous harsh a hurtful word can stir up anger, can stir up wrath, amen, can cause a whole lot of problems, amen. 
But the person who has that wholesome, healsome, healing tongue, amen, can calm others. Amen. Gentle speech can break down any stiff, amen, opposition and have a calming effect in a person's life. Amen. Watch this. Proverbs 25, 15. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded. And a soft tongue breaketh the bone. A soft tongue breaketh the bone. Amen. In other words, gentle speech can break down any stiff opposition and have a calming effect, amen, in a person's life. Amen. That's why you want to have a tongue that is wholesome, a tongue that is healing. Amen. But also, a tongue that is wholesome, a tongue that is healing, is a friendly tongue and an influential tongue that does good. Amen. Amen. That wholesome tongue, amen, that healing tongue is friendly and influential, amen, for that which is good. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Proverbs 16 and 21. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Mm. Amen. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Amen. Now, that person with that wholesome tongue, that person, amen, with a healing tongue, amen, gives satisfaction and contentment. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 18 and 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Amen. Proverbs 13 and 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. Amen. But the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. Mm. Proverbs 12 and 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Lord have mercy. Words, my brothers and sisters, are like seeds which bring forth a crop. Amen. Amen. Words are like seeds which bring forth a crop. So you have to be careful what you say. Amen. Because what you say, amen, uh, 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 is going to uh, have an effect on people's lives. Amen. And it can be a very negative effect. Amen. Uh, again, words are like seeds which bring forth a crop, amen. You cannot plant, amen, tomato seeds, amen, and get cabbage, amen. You cannot plant cabbage, amen, and get watermelon, amen, amen. Uh, 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 your, 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 your words are seeds, and whatever seeds you sow, that's what you're going to reap. We will give an account of our words one day, my brothers and sisters, when we have to stand before the awesome and true God. Amen. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 12 and 37, For by the words, of, or for by thy words, amen, thou shalt be justified. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. Amen. And by thy words, Thou shalt be condemned. Amen. And Proverbs 16, 21, The wise in heart shall be called prudent, 
and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Now, I've said that verse about three or four times tonight because it's a very true verse. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. Sweet, amen, lips, amen, reflect, watch this, intelligence, truth, encouragement, friendliness, pleasantness, and discernment, and justice. This is what he's talking about when he talks about sweet lips. Amen. Solomon says they increase learning. Amen. And the word learning here comes from a Hebrew word which means teaching power. They increase teaching power. My brothers and sisters, you don't have to be mean. You don't have to be hateful, intimidating, or harsh in presenting the truth of God's word. Amen. You will find, amen, that if you will present the truth of the word of God with love and in a respectful, encouraging manner, people tend to respond and learn much more readily. Amen. When you give it to them this way. Amen. Your persuasiveness will be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. You can preach against sin, teach against sin, and still do it <clears throat> in a kind and compassionate manner. Lord have mercy. Let the Holy Spirit, amen, let the Holy Spirit of God, amen, uh, uh, let the Word of God, amen, scream at people, amen. <laughs> let the word of God, let the Holy Spirit of God bop people upside the head, amen, if they need to do so, amen, because they have much more power than you and I do, amen. But the Holy Spirit, amen, I don't believe will bop people upside the head, amen, because he's not like that, amen. And, 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 and we don't have to be like that. We can speak the, 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 the truth in love, and we can do it, amen, in a way where people can be receptive of it. Amen. Now, I don't care how you present the word to some people. They're not going to receive it. They're not going to accept it. But I think we need to bring the word of God as much as we can by the way of the Holy Spirit in love. Amen. Amen. When I was <clears throat> in school, I had one teacher that I really liked and admired, amen, and she could bring out the best in me. And, and I think it was because she showed more attention. She gave more attention. Uh, the words that she, she, she chose were always pleasant. They were always nice. They were always encouraging. And they made me want to do my very best. Amen. Because of the way she talked. Amen. Uh, and, and, and it made an impression on me. Amen. We don't always have to be mean and hateful in and, and how we present the Word of God. Amen. Because that's not like the Spirit of God. Amen. Our tongues can, can do a lot of damage. Amen if we don't use them by way of the Holy Spirit. But when they are submitted and surrendered to the Holy Spirit, they can do a world of good. Amen. Uh, that tongue is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison, and is uh, uh, untamable. We cannot tame it, but there is one who can, and uh, that is the Holy Spirit of God. He can tame our tongues. He can teach us what to say and what not to say it, and how to say it and in the spirit that we should say it in. Amen. If we surrender to him, he can control our tongues. Well, my brothers and sisters, that is going to do it for tonight. And, and we look forward to doing it again on next week if the Lord says the same. But 
uh, unto then, I pray that God will help us control our tongue and help us not to say things that we should not say, but help us to say those things that will edify and build up and not tear down. Until next week, God bless you real good. And stay in the word of God. Continue to grow in your faith. Amen. Because if we ever needed the Lord, we really need him now. And we really need to be drawing closer and closer to him each and every day. God bless you. For more information on these and other announcements, please visit our website at fbcduluth.org. As we have now entered the year 2022, we do so with gratefulness and a reminder that we should love the Lord our God with our whole heart and with all our soul and with all our mind. Happy New Year.